heavenly court of divine justice, the case of Peter, a devoted Christian, is brought before the Almighty. Peter, known for his upright conduct, stands accused not of the typical sins of theft or deceit, but of a singular disobedience to a divine commandment. My dear child, Peter, I have seen the faithfulness of your heart, your commitment to living a life of righteousness. You have not succumbed to the temptations of theft or deceit, and you have honored me by your regular attendance at church and your faithful tithes. Yet, there is one commandment of mine that you have chosen to disregard, a commandment that is crucial to the fabric of your relationship with me. I have called you to a life of holiness, to follow my commandments with all your heart, soul, and mind. While you have excelled in many areas, your refusal to obey this particular commandment has led to a breach in our relationship. The sins of humanity are many, including lying, cheating, and greed. While you have avoided these, your failure to uphold this one commandment has caused a separation between us. My desire for you, Jose, is to enter into the fullness of my kingdom to experience the joy and peace that come from living in harmony with my will. However, your refusal to obey this commandment prevents you from entering into this abundant life. The kingdom of God is a place of righteousness and holiness, and those who enter must do so with hearts that are fully surrendered to me. I do not say these words to condemn you, but to call you to repentance and restoration. Turn away from your disobedience, and return to me with a contrite heart. Seek forgiveness for your refusal to obey, and I will welcome you back into my kingdom with open arms. My love for you is unending, and I long for you to experience the fullness of life that comes from living in obedience to my commands. Abba Father, what is that one thing that I have refused to do? Please tell me and I promise to do it right away. That one thing you've always been claiming too busy and big to do. Peter, Peter, do it right away. Peter. Peter. Yes. I am here. What's the matter? I have been calling you since, but you didn't respond. Are you okay? Yes. I am okay. Just having slight headache. It's okay then. The meeting is in 15 minutes time. Oh. I totally forgot. I will get ready. Thank you. My pleasure. May I go now? Yes please. This is the third time I will be having this revelation in two weeks. What is going on? This is becoming serious. Lord Jesus, please forgive me my sins of disobedience to you. I do not want to miss heaven. Please reveal to me that which I have been doing wrong. Help me to fix things right with you Lord Jesus. I know you love me, that's why you have been warning me. Open my eyes to see what you want me to do. Help me Abba Father, in Jesus name I have prayed. Amen. Who are you to disturb my operation? Why are you hindering my work? I am a child of God. <laughs> are you truly one? Answer me. Are you a Christian? So because you think you don't sin, you're a Christian? What about the sin of disobedience and pride? Me? Disobedient and proud. To what? I have never been proud or disobedient. Keep deceiving yourself. <laughs> this dream again? I am a Christian. Am I proud or disobedient? What am I doing wrong Lord Jesus? Heavenly Father, I come before you with a humble heart, seeking your guidance and wisdom. I know that I am not perfect, and there are areas of my life where I may fall short of your will. Lord, I ask that you reveal to me what I am not doing right, where I have gone astray. I am confused and in need of your direction. Please show me the way, and help me to walk in obedience to your will. In Jesus' name, Amen. Hello Peter. Hi Lizzie. How may I help you? There are some of your church members here, they said they are evangelism crew. 
They said you promised to join them for evangelism, and they've come here so you can join them. You might want to see them. Oh. I didn't promise them. One of the committee told me that she saw me in her dream evangelizing with the evangelism department crew and she begged me to join. I had to say yes when she was disturbing my phone with calls and messages. You can see that I'm way too busy to be going for evangelism right now. And, you don't expect someone of my caliber to start preaching. I am a highly respected person in the society. I'll rather support them with money. I can't go about evangelizing. I have several meetings to attend and proposals to go through. Please, tell them that I'm busy, tell them I can't go and I'll call them later. It's all right, sir. I'll go and tell them. But I think you should give it a thought. It's nothing to think about. You may leave now. Thank you. All right. These dreams and revelations still worries me. What is the Lord trying to tell me? I can't even focus on concentrate. I keep on remembering those dreams. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, please do not forsake me. Just like you have revealed to me through revelation and dream, please reveal to me that which I am not doing right. Help me, O oh Lord. I want to get it right with you. Hello, young man. You look so tired. Why are you looking sad? Because I am being disobeyed. Who disobeyed a young boy like you? You are too young to be disobeyed. That's what you think. Look, I am worried about you and you seems to be under pressure. Where are your parents? It is you I am worried about. What does Matthew 28, 19 to 20 and Proverbs 11, 30 says? Matthew 28, 19 to 20 and Proverbs 11, 30? What is there? What does it says? What's in that verse? Where is this young boy? He spoke to me not quite long. I hope all is well with him. I'm trying so hard to remember the verse that this boy told me today. I made a mistake by not writing the Bible verse down. I just want to know what the verse says. I hope I remember. I know it is the book of Matthew, but I can't read the whole of Matthew now. I'll read it when I remember. Matthew 28, 19 to 20. And Proverbs 11, 30. Yes. I remember. Let me quickly go and read it before I shower. Matthew 28, 19 to 20 says, Go therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things, whatsoever I have commanded you, and, lo, I am with you alway, even unto the end of the world. Proverbs 11.30 says, The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. Am I a fool? Is this what the Lord has been trying to tell me? So, I have been a fool all these while. I need to see my pastor immediately. Pastor, those were the Bible passage the young boy gave me. I have never encountered that in my life. It was as if a spirit or an angel came to talk to me. And to think that God has spoken to me through many people, but I relied on my personal way of hearing from God, which is mostly through dream and trance. I thought God was going to answer me using the same way. My secretary told me, Sis Faith begged me to join the evangelism department and so many other visible signs. Matthew 28, 19 to 20 and Proverbs 11, 30? God is great. Pastor, but how does that mean disobedience and pride? Are you not evangelizing? Mr. Peter. In Matthew 28, 19 to 20, Jesus gives his disciples what is known as the Great Commission. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. This commandment is not just a suggestion or a good idea. It is a mandate for all who follow Christ. The importance of obeying this commandment cannot be overstated. It is at the heart of the Christian faith and the mission of the Church. Yet, many Christians today overlook or neglect this commandment, thinking that simply attending church or being a good person is enough to be called a Christian. 
Proverbs 11.30 tells us, The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and the one who is wise saves lives. As Christians, we are called to be like trees of life, bearing fruit that leads others to Christ. This means actively sharing the gospel, making disciples, and teaching others to obey God's commandments. When we neglect the Great Commission, we miss out on the opportunity to fulfill our purpose as Christians. We become like trees that bear no fruit, stagnant and unproductive in our faith. This not only hinders our own spiritual growth, but also deprives others of the life-giving message of the Gospel. As followers of Christ, we must heed the words of Matthew 28, 19 to 20 and take seriously our responsibility to make disciples. This means stepping out of our comfort zones, sharing our faith with others, and actively seeking to fulfill the mission that Jesus has given us. Only then can we truly be called Christians, bearing fruit that leads to eternal life. The implications of not obeying the Great Commission and neglecting our responsibility to make disciples are significant for Christians and the world around us. Here are some key implications. 1. Disobedience to Christ. Neglecting the Great Commission is a direct disobedience to the command of Jesus. As Christians, our primary allegiance is to Christ and failing to obey his commands hinders our relationship with him. 2. Failure to fulfill our purpose, the Great Commission is central to the purpose of the Church and every believer. By not actively making disciples, we fail to fulfill the purpose for which God created us. 3. Lost opportunity for salvation, when we do not share the Gospel and make disciples, People remain in spiritual darkness, separated from God. Our failure to act means that some may never have the opportunity to hear and respond to the good news of Jesus Christ. 4. Stagnant spiritual growth. Engaging in the Great Commission is not just about helping others grow in their faith. It also helps us grow spiritually. When we neglect this command, we miss out on the blessings and growth that come from obedience to God's Word. 5. Impact on future generations. By not actively making disciples, we fail to pass on the faith to future generations. This can lead to a decline in the number of believers and a weakening of the church's influence in society. 6. Misrepresentation of Christianity. When Christians do not live out the Great Commission, it can give a false impression of what it means to be a follower of Christ. Our actions, or lack thereof, can either draw people to Christ or push them away. Neglecting the Great Commission has far-reaching implications for both individuals and the Church as a whole. As Christians, we must take seriously our responsibility to share the Gospel, make disciples, and fulfill the mission that Jesus has given us. That's it about disobedience. Now to pride, Mr. Peter, it is you who feels too big and important to evangelize due to your status and wealth. This your story mirrors the struggles of many Christians who struggle with pride and a sense of self-importance. Like Peter in the Bible before his denial of Jesus, Mr. Peter, you may not realize the extent of your pride and how it hinders your ability to fulfill God's call to share the gospel. Pride can manifest in various ways, including a reluctance to engage in tasks that may be perceived as beneath us, such as sharing the gospel with others. But trust me, Jesus loves you so much, that's why he has been cautioning you. When we allow pride to dictate our actions, we risk missing out on the blessings that come from serving God and sharing His love with others. Jesus spoke about the dangers of pride, warning that everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but he who humbles himself will be exalted. Luke 14:11. The Bible also tells us that pride goes before destruction, 
a haughty spirit before a fall, Proverbs 16:18. These verses remind us of the importance of humility and the dangers of pride. As Christians, we are called to follow the example of Jesus, who humbled himself and became a servant to all. We are called to set aside our pride and to serve others with humility and love, including sharing the gospel with those around us. I hope your story will serve as a reminder to all of us to examine our hearts and to guard against pride. Let us humble ourselves before God and others, and be willing to serve and share the gospel, regardless of our status or wealth. In doing so, we will honor God and experience the joy that comes from serving Him. May the Almighty continue to guide you. So, this is what the Lord has been trying to tell me? I didn't know it is manda for us to win souls as Christians. I'll put aside my wealth and riches and preach the gospel of Christ. God bless you pastor. Amen sir. Please bow your head, let's pray. Daniel 12, 3, says, Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens, and those who lead many to righteousness, like the stars forever and ever. Make it a habit to win souls for Christ.